Good evening YouTube, my name is Amos Rowe. For this video we are doing a, an episode of the Anime Review Series. Uh, and this time we are going to what started as one of the most absurd concepts to being probably the sleeper hit of 2015. We are looking <clears throat> at Cute Heart Earth Defense Club of Love, which premiered on June the 7th and recently ended uh, today. Now, we need to understand what this series started as, and in many ways remained, but we also have to remember, we also have to think about what it evolved into. Hugh Defense Club was, by all intents and purposes, a parody of the magical girls genre. Okay? That's the way it started as. It stayed that and remembered that it was supposed to be a parody, but it did something that very few series can do in 12 episodes. It can tell you a story from the first episode and build to a climax. Basically, it's like, read a book that's 12 chapters long, okay? You have chapter 1, which is going to introduce you characters, introduce you to the idea of the story, and then each chapter that goes on builds to the climax, builds to the finale. Well. The problem is, sometimes you get these series, and we'll be talking about another one on Thursday, where you get the story, but there's holes in it because of the way they wrote it. Not here. Here, they clearly knew the story, they told it to you from the first episode, and they built up to this point. The final episode. Story uh, goes, <clears throat> we have five high school students that go to an, a high school called Banan, B-I-N-A-N. They, uh, one day, are hanging out at the bathhouse run by the Hakon family, Yumoto Hakon and his brother, Gora. Well, one day, while they're hanging out there, a Pink Wombat, when that's exactly what his name is, ends up dropping from the sky, dropping from a hole in the sky, and landing in the bath. And in turn, decrees that these five young men are going to become what are called battle lovers. I'm going to tell you this now. Three of them I got right, the other two I got backwards. <laughs> The names of the individuals are as follows. Yamoto Hakoin Hakon uh, Atsushi Kenagawa Eo Naruko An Yufin Ryu Zao. They are the battle lovers. For those wondering, it goes like this. Hakone is Scarlet. Kinogawa is actually the one I got backwards. He's um, the green one. Uh, Naruko is Sulfur. Yufin is the blue one. And Zhao is, I believe it's Magenta. Now, they are the battle lovers. They, are go they end up in a Monster of the Day situation where they fight a person who gets turned into a creature that is targeted by the Student Council, aka the Conquest Club. The Conquest Club consists of three people. Specifically, Ibushi Arma, Akoya Gero, and lastly, but certainly not least, Kenshiro Kosatsu. 
and these three answer to Lord Zundar. Lord Zundar, who is a green hedgehog. And he has a friend named Hiragashi, who we meet later on in the series. As far as each episode goes, it's a very basic, very formulaic thing where you have your creature of the day, or your target of the day, turns, gets turned into a creature, and fights the battle lovers. That's basic as hell. The thing of it is, is there's a lot of other stuff that goes into this that is turns it into not just a parody, and with the fourth wall breaks, trust me, you know it's a parody. But what you also find out is there's another layer to the story which involves the friendship between the student council president and one of the battle lovers. And how that sort of turned into a bitter um, rivalry at one point. And it's a very interesting story because also the story isn't just told through the episode. You also find a very subtle story being told with the ending theme, which is actually sung by the Conquest Club members. And in that story, you find that um, Kenshiro goes to a theater, and in the theater they actually recap the episode the scenes from the episodes. And you also see the members of the Battle Lovers sitting behind him. And he sits alone. Strictly alone. The other two don't go with him. So, you have that story being told. And it's so interesting the way they do it that literally the whole time, at one point, me and somebody on Tumblr, we were trying to speculate what was going to happen between, you know, consider and uh, sushi. <clears throat> well, <coughs> excuse me. Nothing happened as far as anything really bad. But the ending of the series, which I'll let you see for yourself, ended up being a very pleasant and very happy ending and one that I was... Uh, quite, uh, quite, you know, I was, I uh, quite enjoyed. And I wonder, because it's always supposed to be a 12 episode series, but I wonder with the way it ended, could we see a second season? Well, I am certainly hoping, because if they can write a second season the same way they wrote this, whew, because each episode when they introduce the character, it's not like that character just, you meet that character once and then you never see him again. You eventually will see the character again at some point in the series. That's the point. And the beautiful thing is, even though, like I said, it's a parody of the magical girl genre, they do the things that make you realize, okay, it's a parody, but it's also this. It also tells you a very interesting story about friendship. And that was something I really, really enjoyed with the character development of everybody. Because it seemed like over the course of this series, even though they were still kind of iffy about doing it, some of them really grew into the role of being a battle lover. Yumoto from the start, everybody else kind of had to get into it. And while Ayn was kind of more like, eh, for, for probably most of the series, if not all of the series, everybody else seems slowly, you know, got into their roles and slowly really evolved into being one of the magical boys, the battle lovers. Then you get to... Then I want to talk about, you know, the Conquest Club because it's not just... It wasn't just the Kinshiro show. Because you have Arma... And you have Giro. Giro was a character who, I couldn't explain why, but at first when I looked at him, I couldn't really embrace him. It was like the weirdest thing for me. Even if I wanted to, I really couldn't wrap my arms around him. 
But as the series went on, and as I also started reading things from other people that were watching the show, I really started to look at him in a completely different light. And I went, you know what? I actually like him. He's actually a really cool character. Plus, he reminds me of Utena, <laughs> which is why I, I legitimately called him at one point the male Utena, because he had the long pink hair, kind of like Utena does. Except he wore a white boy's uniform as opposed to what Utena wears. But, um, I really, really, really started to enjoy his character. And, yeah, I was, when we got to the end, it was like, you know what? It was like, you know what? I dig him. I really do. Especially when he punched down a member of the press society. Because it took, see, here's the thing. Okay, there's three factions. I mentioned, I forgot to mention the other one. This other faction is called the press society, and they were trying to find out who the battle lovers were. Well, they were getting their, um, orders from the talking goldfish Hiragashi. And they, even though you didn't see them that much, you saw them probably sporadically through the 12 episodes, every time they showed up, you almost knew something was going to happen. And somebody, and they were up to no good. And sure enough, we find it, you do find out that they are. But, it's what really happens towards the very end. That, not just with them, but with the... Um, Zendor and Hiragashi, that really makes you go, got it. So, let's really break this down. Plot progression, plot and story progression is a definite, definite A+. Plus. The, well, okay, actually, scratch that. It's about an A-. Minus. It's a step down only because there are a couple times when I think they forget that they're supposed to be a parody and they go a little too serious, maybe. But you can almost you can almost forgive it. A minus. Animation I liked personally. I I enjoyed the animation style they used for this series, and I think that you would get a kick out of it if you got a chance to see it. Um. It, some people say it looked low budget, but you know what? It didn't look that bad. Like, I don't know. I, I really liked it. Um, character development? Oh yes, there was definitely development amongst all the characters. Like I mentioned, the battle lovers progressing to event from being the reluctant heroes to eventually starting to really get into the groove and really getting into wanting to be members of the um, of the group. Also the development of the student council, the conquest club. Really, really, th they... Okay, you had Kenshiro. He was a bit of a hard ass throughout the whole series. Fine. You have Arma, Arima. I liked him a lot. And he really developed, I think, um, over time. And of course, my boy Okoya, get our Okoya. He um he really shocked me because I didn't think I was going to like him. Shows you what I knew. But a lot of things happened in twelve episodes that really made me enjoy him. What can I say? Um, <clears throat> do I really have any issues with the series? No. 12 episodes, the episodes are about 24 minutes long, but there's 24 minutes that don't overstay their welcome. And that's really something that's important, because every good series does that. They can figure out a way to give you a set amount of time for an episode, and it doesn't feel like it. A really bad series makes that 24 minutes feel like an hour. And believe me, you don't want that with any good series. So, where do we come out in this series? You should definitely be watching the uh, 
Utah Earth Defense Club. Because I promise you, it's definitely one of the sleeper hits of 2015. And if you're not watching it, you're missing out. I promise you that. Anywho, that is the verdict. Go check it out. It is on. Funimation is up to episode 11. The next episode. So the final episode will be up uh, next week for them. But you can also check it out on other websites. I'll let you figure out where they are. And um, yeah, please go check out the series. Because if you don't, you will be missing one of the treasures of the winter season. Anywho, uh, you all have a great evening, and I shall talk to you all on Thursday when we talk about Tokyo Ghoul Route A. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.